Well, they do it because what they feel inside doesn't match what they see in the mirror. They, their, gender, their gender identity, is what we refer to it as, doesn't match what, they, um, what, they, what their body has for them. Um, do we know what causes this? No. I mean, that's the short answer. There is no, it, it would be like trying to say what causes left-handedness or what causes someone to be gay. We don't know that either. Um, what is it like? What what when you see people go through this experience? Can you encapsulate what you take away from it? What what your takeaway from their experience? What what do they go through? Well, what they go through is it it happens usually fairly gradually, so that they may be aware of it in childhood, but in childhood it's you can kind of get by if you feel like the way you feel internally doesn't match the way you look externally because in childhood you can you don't necessarily if you're a girl you don't necessarily have to play with dolls if you're a boy you can play with dolls at that age when people hit puberty that's when it, the full force of your the the sex you were assigned at birth sort of hits you and because if you are, if you identify as male, for example, and you start menstruating, that does not fit. And so what happens is what we refer to as gender dysphoria, which is a very strong discomfort and this, um, and this unease that develops be because the way you feel internally doesn't match the body. It doesn't match what people see you as. And what's that like for the person? I'm going to ask you, I'm going to say something here. Tighten it up. Sorry, because I okay. get a minute 15 right. for the whole right. shebang. So, so it, might be, it might be that they feel depressed. It might be that they feel very anxious. Sometimes people get suicidal. In fact, the suicide rate among transgender individuals is the highest we've seen in any population. I mean, like uh, some studies are showing that anywhere from 30 to 60 percent of people have attempted suicide. Wow. Attempted. Not just thought about, but attempted. Wow. Um, why, if 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 it if it comes into the 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 presence, the frontal lobe of your brain when you're an adolescent, all of a sudden, why does it seem that so many of the transgender transgenders with whom I spoke said they did it around 50? Well, part of it is the the culture. I mean, if you think of somebody who's 50 now, when they were 14, it wasn't an option. We didn't have language for it. We didn't have, the, the idea wasn't out there. They may have known something. I mean, I, I work with people who are transitioning in their 40s and 50s and even one who's transitioning in her 60s. And when you talk to them about what was it like when you were growing up and what was it like in adolescence they describe all the same things but they didn't have a label for it they didn't have anything to tack it on to so it's kind of coming out of the closet it's it, it's it's because culturally culturally yes. it's coming out of the closet and people feel as if they have the avenue to to actualize this right inner yearning well and and it because it we're talking about it more now it we have a language for it i mean if you think about 30 years ago Virtu if you thought of anything even related to this, you've thought of Christine Jorgensen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was that was they're, it. They're too young, but I remember her. Yeah, yeah. And and that right. was somebody who you know, yeah. sort um, of went away to do surgery. Yeah, to, to Denmark. Yes, <laughs> she did it. Yes, it was the very first. She's from Denmark. That was the very first transgender uh, surgery, uh, sexual reassignment. Well, that's. And that's what it used to be called, now it's and now we refer to it as gender-affirming surgery. Gender-affirming surgery. Because the, the, gender the gender is, is okay, but here's, gender's here's internal. The one. Uh, well, misconceptions about transgender. Um, well, there are a lot of them. Um, okay, first of all, uh, hormones, gender assignment doesn't have anything to do with the sexual orientation. No, not at all. They're, they're, they're related because if, if you identify internally as male, then how you describe your sexual orientation as heterosexual, homosexual, for example, has to do with who you're, who you're attracted to. But it doesn't, 
they're they're totally different things. I mean, it doesn't. People who are gay are not more likely to be transgender. In fact, it's usually the other way around. It's more more people who are transgender are people who are heterosexual, which makes a whole lot of sense because most of the population is heterosexual. Yeah.